today we have again i am not a body i am free for i am still as god created me it's lesson 216 and we review we practice today it can be but myself i crucify it can be but myself i crucify all that i do i do unto myself if i attack i suffer but if i forgive salvation will be given me i am not a body i am free for i am still as god created me all that i do i do unto myself you can just allow the wisdom of that to sink in it's easy to understand that all that i do i do unto myself when you think of attack thoughts or defensive feelings we don't feel our good ourselves when we have those feelings but it's always directed outward but to really understand and experience that it is to ourselves we do it because there is only one self so we can meditate with this idea and the idea that i am not the body i am free for i am still as god created me
Beautiful. Yes, that's all I do, I do unto myself. If I attack, I suffer, but if I forgive, salvation will be given me. What do you, what do you think salvation is? <laughs> Freedom from suffering. Freedom from suffering, joy. Salvation means being saved. Being saved from our own insanity. Questioning the quote reality perception of this dream. You feel you're in a dream. But do you really feel like you're in a dream as you look at the days and the timeline the characters all divided in their own sections, little sections of events, characters, time, time and space events, sections. What is that quote about the sleight of hand? Time is a trick, sleight of hand. Past illusion, which figures come and go. As if by magic. That's the dream. It seems like they pop pop in and pop out, pop up and pop down <laughs> in our perception. It seems like surprises. Oh, someone is coming there. Someone is going there. Something is happening. Seems like, oh, as if we're not in control, as if there is a timeline happening that's out of control, completely out of control, <laughs> completely insane and completely random. That's what it seems like. And it seems like you are that little character trying to make sense of it, the little person. But I think we are not that. I think through these lessons, we're actually learning to experience, opening up to experience. If we are above the timeline, we are beyond random events. The random events aren't really random, like he says there. There is a plan behind appearances that doesn't change. He's saying the script is written. So you can see everything that happens as symbolic of beliefs in your mind, everything. Is symbolic of beliefs in your mind. So you want to change your beliefs. You want to use one belief. You want to use forgiveness on all other beliefs. Forgiveness is seeing illusion as illusion. And I love a part in the course from The Little Hindrance. It's uh, from chapter 26, section 5. And this is from paragraph 6. 
And here he talks about the impossible, the impossibility of this illusion. He's saying forgiveness is the great release from time. It is the key to learning that the past is over. Madness speaks no more. There is no other teacher and no other way. For what has been undone no longer is. And who can stand upon a distant shore and dream himself across an ocean to a place and time that have long since gone by? How real a hindrance can this dream be to where he really is? For this is fact and does not change whatever, whatever dreams he has. I get goosebumps from this. <laughs> Yet can he still imagine he is elsewhere and in another time? In the extreme, he can delude himself that this is true and pass from mere imagining into belief and into madness, quite convinced that where he would prefer to be, he is. Quite convinced that where he pr would prefer to be, he is. Where he would prefer to be. <laughs> like there's a preference, a choice in the mind. And that is to be exactly where you believe you are in the dream. Like this line, this uh, truth, dreams are wish fulfillment. Dreams are wish fulfillment. Dreams are preferences. Even if they are bad, can you imagine? <laughs> You can imagine because you did. <laughs> but we are actually moving away from sad dreams. That's why we are called to the Course in Miracles and to these joinings. We are moving past dreams that hurt by really seeing, looking straight through the illusion. That can be our prayer. Let me really look through, look past, but by looking through, by seeing what I believe. And is, is this a hindrance to the place whereon he stands? To this distant shore of a dream? Is this a hindrance to where he really stands? Is an echo from the past that he may hear a fact in what is there to hear where he is now? It's an echo from the past, a fact in what is there to hear where he is now. No, is the answer, but is that felt? And how much can his own illusions about time and place affect a change in where he really is? Can our own illusions affect a change in where we really are? The answer is no. They cannot threaten us. The dreams cannot threaten us but they can be seen for what they are. They have to be seen for what they are and forgiven. The unforgiven is a voice that calls from out the pa a past forevermore gone by. The unforgiven calls from a past that is forevermore gone by. That's what the unforgiven stuff, thoughts, feelings, beliefs are a voice that calls from a past that is gone. 
And everything that points to it as real is but a wish that what is gone could be made real again and seen as here and now in place of what is really here and now. It's a wish that what is gone could ma be made real again. Oh my God, let us look at that wish. Let's really look at that wish. Let's wish to wish it away. <laughs> Let's remember to do it when we get lost. That's when we need it. When we forget, we have blackouts. Blackout of reality. We can have a prayer. Oh, let me become conscious of what's going on here. So is this a hindrance to the truth the past is gone and cannot be returned to you. Is this dream a hindrance? And do you want that fearful instant kept when heaven seemed to disappear and God was feared and made a symbol of your hate? Forget the time of terror that has been so long ago corrected and undone. Can sin withstand the will of God? Can it be up to you to see the past and put it in the present? You cannot go back. And everything that points the way in the direction of the past but sets you on a mission whose accomplishment can only be unreal. Such is the justice your all-loving Father has ensured must come to you. And from your own unfairness to yourself has he protected you. From your own unfairness towards yourself has he protected you. You cannot lose your way because there is no way but his and nowhere can you go except to him. It's so beautiful and loving this is. You can read the whole section the little hindrance, it's, it's so helpful. This is good use of our time. It takes us above the timeline. Yeah, it says somewhere else in the course that we have been long delayed. We have a lot of work to do and we have been long delayed. <laughs> there is much to do and we have been long delayed. It's much forgiveness to do. <laughs> and this is fun. This is like the best job in the world, leading out of the world. <laughs> I mean, this is the real good use of time, is to do this forgiveness of the illusion. I really love that. I really love that we can give ourselves so fully, can give our mind, our life, our time over to the forgiveness of the illusion. And we may not even know how to do that, but if we have the intention, the willingness, that I wanna, I wanna see what I made up. I wanna see that I made it up. So I can let it go. Especially when we get automatic, when we become like robots doing automatic 
behaviors that we think we must. I've actually been guided to not shower for like three days. And I, 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 this morning too, I was like, well, today I must shower, but spirits like, no, don't shower. <laughs> so so the, you know, the habits or the, yeah, the patterns. We can let it go. I actually feel like I'm floating above the timeline a bit. This morning I thought that when I didn't need to shower. I think, yeah, I'm really starting to float above the timeline. <laughs> what it feels like. But yeah, we can open up the room for for specifics, for things you want to put on the altar and release that feel unhelpful, that feel like keeping you stuck, or miracles too are welcome. So, Solve. Yeah, morning. Yeah. I would like to put this on the altar. I can I really hate myself when I fall into this robot thing as you talked about. And um, yeah, I guess I did that again last night. Um, around the padrone that uh, suddenly was needed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can see this morning that it, it, it feels like a spin going down the self hatred. So I guess I will try just to put that on the altar. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I just it. And... What was it that felt like automatic about it? You felt stressed when you were requested? More yes. Mm -hmm. And f first, when I was requested, I actually laughed because I have been, we were in the town hall yesterday morning. And I was, oh, I actually started ordering that Padron and then we were like, oh, I actually don't need it. So, uh, and I got doubtful and I was in stress at that point, uh, just being there actually brings up a lot. Doing things brings up a lot of stress for me right now. and. And uh, I was, so I was like, it's just looking at pizza and saying, I don't know. And then I just cancelled that. And then I, we were in, at Lorian Garrett's when I got the message and I just laughed, you know. And I didn't judge myself there. But then in the evening, coming back and, and he, he gave me that link, I could go online and do it. And, Peter was on a call and I, 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 I realized now, I was like, no, no, now I, I really need to have this done. And, and I went in and did it online and there was something there because suddenly it didn't look like it was secure and I was trying to find out why. And, and I did it. And I, I had this feeling of, nah, maybe I shouldn't do this, but I went through it all. And in the end, I was like, I don't even know when they're going to answer me. It's a little hard to hear you now. It's kind of windy there, and but we, I think, we get the yeah. Like you're beating and the, you up here. And the, yeah, and the doubt come up this morning. Like, am I gonna wait for this or go there? And you know, and a lot of thoughts and 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 this is again like thinking I've done the wrong thing. Yeah. And then just beating myself up. Yeah, and this time, and 
you know, it's like, I think there's a deadline, there's something that needs to be done quick. Mm, maybe you can take this an op as an opportunity to do it completely differently. Something is requested from you here and you could give it your all now as a backdrop for you to be happy. That voice that says you have made a mistake, you're wrong, this is bad, this is out of order. That's the ego's voice. You will undo time by see practicing this differently now. It, it sounds like you actually attracted a lesson for you to face this strong self-judgment and self-attack. Yeah, that, that's another thing I actually is realized. I think it was last night I was listening to a podcast with David saying exactly this you know it's like it's it's a gift because everything that comes it's just a gift to try forgiveness again yeah. and i thought wow i use it like to, to punish myself like oh oh i didn't you know i didn't heal this yet so mm -hmm. this is a this is come back just to punish me instead of a gift yeah. to forgive myself again that's just I was like, whoa, when I heard that. So yeah, to so see it as a gift. Yeah, see it as a gift. And just practical advice living in Spain, you always need a fresh empadron. <laughs> one on hand, because especially in your case, <laughs> in, you know, you're in the stage of getting um, residency. Yeah. You will always need it for different things. <laughs> yeah, I just thought now I got my green card, so I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, you will need it in unexpected situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> and by the way, we got ours sent to us via email. So you could call and ask if they could email it to you. Yeah. 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 Getting very practical. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. If you could go into your video setting and make your screen brighter would be great too. Because you're always a bit in shadow with your faces. You can try. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to move. It is on bright, but yeah. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything you would like to express? It's good to see you today, Sandra. Good to have you with us this morning. <laughs> I saw Keol too. That was very sweet. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We have Vanessa too soon. But yeah, how is it there in Ireland? Um, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Okay. It's hot, actually. It's, it's rained the last week or two, but it seems nice now. <laughs> Lovely. Mm. Sweet. Glad you made it. Do you have anything you would like to put on the altar this morning? Um, there's a lot, a lot happening at the moment. <laughs> Um, I've, I, I don't know, there's, there's just so much going on 
even sitting here, I don't really know what to say or how to put it into words. Start with the feeling, maybe. Feeling of a lot of hatred towards somebody in particular. A lot of hatred. Hmm. Very intense rage that I've gotten in touch with the last week or two that I never knew that I had. And it's a deep hatred. Um, I've been trying to forgive and practicing my forgiveness lessons. It's just so hard. I just want to stay in the hatred, you know, it's like, it's easier, you know, that way. Mm. I'm finding it hard to forgive. It sounds like a deep opportunity to follow your heart, to trust from within. Because that hatred, that energy of hatred towards somebody it's like somehow when that is there you you identify with it it's like all that i do i do unto myself it is this inflamed fire of hate or of feeling really bad you know mm. But spirit loves to take care of the fire, like the fireman, <laughs> to give it all to spirit, all. Because there is fear underneath, there is fear of that the ego may be right, that you are a person, that you are in a situation. It's good to get in touch with our fear. To be able to release it. Yeah. And give over the person. This person that is the object, object of your hatred. Mm keep handing him or her over to the Holy Spirit in your mind. Keep doing it repeatedly. Okay. Whenever you feel the contraction of the hatred, mm -hmm. try to open it up and yeah. give it over. Yeah, it's gonna go you well. I know it. And this is good when these strong feelings come up. Yeah, we have the relationships we are in are they are in a way our pathway mm. to the light, to um, neg negating negating the, the false. Mm. This is not who I am. This is not 
true. Because it's always, you could maybe read the, maybe the self-concept versus self, where he talks about self-concept and the belief that you are what your brother or sister made of you. It makes us so angry that we would be that, that we think they made of us. We will feel rage because we know it's not the truth. Yeah. Yeah, because I felt as well, like, even though, even though, like, this has been happening the last few weeks, there's another part of me kind of deep inside that is like, this is good for me. <laughs> it's good for my healing, you know? So deep down, there's this sense of this is a, this is good, you know. If I'm able to get through this and forgive this, then I can forgive all things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So forgive one and you have forgiven all. Yeah. Forgive one fully, forgive one truly. And that is not to agree that the ego is right. It's to agree that the spirit is right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. To go to Vanessa. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's like when I don't even know why I'm feeling uh, what I'm feeling. Because when I think about the situation, it's like it's like doesn't make sense. I feel this in, intense feeling like, and then I try to to forgive in my in my mind, and I try to release that. But it's like I I get stuck, and and I just I try to analyze, and then yeah, I just feel oh my god, help me to to get get out of this place in my mind. Um, because for me, I, I used to, to do things in format. For example, uh, for me, it's, it's okay to do things. But now with Jonas, it's like, sometimes it's so, it's so tiny, so tiny things to do. And I I could just go there and, and do it and do this, but this I start to 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 question what is collaboration about and why I feel like when he he doesn't do something, why I feel so alone. And it's so confused because I don't know if I'm trying to fix them. And, you know, in my mind, I just say, you think only about your things, what you want to do. You feel good to read the course, you feel, but it's not, you don't have this sense of, of collaboration in general. And yeah, and on the other hand, I don't know what this collaboration is about. In my mind, I have, I, I think I know, maybe. And then I try to, to say, let's, you know, maybe we should cling together, do something together, but I get lost because when he said to me, oh, but for me, it's good, I feel good to do this, I feel relaxed to do that. 
And then I try to say, uh, okay, okay, if you feel good about that. Yeah, we just do like to share because I was trying to to release fear and I was feeling just sadness and angry and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Putting that on the altar. Yeah, with relationships, you know, you can you can invite you can offer, you can suggest, but you can never really make another do what you want. You know, like that's the whole thing is like, yeah, what is collaboration? That's a good question. Collaboration is an experience of flow. You know, that, that there is an alignment, there is a joy. And it's beautiful when you have that experience. But if you can't really make it happen, you know, you can suggest, you can invite, you can share. This this is what I see, this is what would feel lovely, you know. But then it's to hand over the the outcome. Give over if you have a certain outcome about how the collaboration should look or if there is participation or not you know if there is an, no participation you participate you you go with the holy spirit you know basic collaboration in consciousness and in and through forgiveness of it all and I feel your sweet invitation for Jonas to join you on a lot of things, you know. And it seems, yeah, I mean, your task is to hand over Jonas and to hand over outcomes. And things may shift, you know, but it is those places where you get so frustrated. That's where the forgiveness work is. You go within and see, yeah, ask spirit, what would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? I don't know, but pets come to mind, like animals and pets. And I, there's a saying, you cannot teach an old dog to sit. <laughs> you know, and the other day, Peter and Solway were here and he had a fly. He tried to meditate. No, he was meditating. And the fly was just so, it kept being on his nose. And on his mouth. His mouth. He wanted to <laughs> crawl into his mouth. <laughs> like he couldn't teach the fly to go away. He couldn't, <laughs> like, we can never change the external world. Never. So, but we can look at our itchy thoughts and our, you know, annoying thoughts. Like you wanted Jonas to do something with you. It's very irritating when he doesn't. <laughs> so that's like an irritating thought. And and the journey is to go through to communicate with the Holy Spirit about it, to sit with it, to ask for miracles. And sure, talk to Jonas about it. Say, this is what I would like. But don't say, you must do this. You have to do this. This is what collaboration is. We can't really force anything.
and there is a collaboration going on all the time in our thinking. We collaborate either with ego or with the Holy Spirit constantly. We want to collaborate only with the Holy Spirit. That's what brings us joy. Thanks so much for letting it up, for sharing the emotion about this. And yeah, um, seems to be a, a theme in the mind, but um. I felt very trapped here last night and, um, you know, the woman that I'm working with can be, it seems quite difficult. So I was just watching my mind and yeah, there's actually some hatred underneath it, which um, I was so ashamed of, you know, I'm supposed to be looking after it and I'm hating her at a deeper level. And um yeah, just while we were sat in the meditation, I really was just trying to hold her, you know. Um, yeah, and just just forgive my mind, you know, for, for what's going on and for believing it, uh, believing that that's true. So that's what I want to lay on the altar because it's, you know, it's like I, I've got to find or the ego has to find something to to blame and I think she's doing that to me um yeah because I'm trapped I'm, I'm trapped here and it's her fault you know because actually I've yeah I tried to get the last week of work away from here and then yeah workers said no um the contract is you know like to the end of the month and we'd like you to come back here for that last week and I'm like no <laughs> um you know so instead of using it as a forgiveness lesson it's like yeah there's a part of me that's quite strong and yeah that that doesn't want to forgive and let go it's like no it shouldn't be like this I should get my own way actually um, so again the, do I want to be right or happy <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like even though you can see it very clearly and that I am crucifying myself and making it you know I'm going to make myself miserable it's like yeah, why would I do that again you know but yeah so yeah yeah how can it be worth think, it Put in. How can it be worth it? How can anything be worth making yourself miserable over it? Mm. Yeah. And it feels like I, I have to be constantly on this, like, or else it's going to come in again. So my prayer is to really, you know, like, yeah be loving enough to, to to keep handing this over as it comes up or comes in. Mm. Yeah, ask to see. Ask to see in your mind what you need to see. Ask for the miracle. And ask to see the guilt in the mind that is underneath. Mm. Yeah. The scenario, the world. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I, I just didn't think I could be that honest about it, but it feels really good that actually I, I can. <laughs> yeah, you. that's awesome. Talk about all the hatred. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So just thank you, Sandra, for, for, for raising it and giving me the courage, actually, you know, to, to say, hey, this is this is in my mind, too. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And the forgiveness lessons are so important. They are very specific, you know, that 
the feelings are very specific. The situations are very, very specific when you get those feelings, you know, in the interactions with somebody. So that's pray first are the words I hear, pray first. When you are going to go into the situation where you feel this will happen, this hatred, this annoyance or anger, that to pray, put peace out from Holy Spirit, let this situation be an opportunity for me to feel my peace of mind. Let this person situation be my opportunity to experience my union with you, Holy Spirit. And maybe the prayer, I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I will heal as I let him teach me to heal. Like that prayer, keep that in mind. Yeah. And thanks for joining about it. it. It feels like, I don't know, but I see the mind as, you know, it has those boxes of stuck material. It's like a storage room with some stuck material. And we are put in situations and with people where, yeah, the, the boxes are coming up to awareness. So it's good, actually, that and it's a misperception of yourself that causes this hatred. So the fact that you talk about it, both of you, all of you, is is very um, it's very helpful for the healing. Because it's opening the boxes with the unreal. It's unreal material, but you know it's believed to be saying something about who you are. So thank you. Just open as many boxes as possible. <laughs> Get this image of Holy Spirit. Uh, Christmas morning for Holy Spirit is <laughs> opening box. Oh, hatred. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving this to me. Oh, 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 jealousy. Great. Uh, I really appreciate this gift. <laughs> like Holy Spirit, so happy. Anytime we open a box, we give it to him. I think of it like this, you know, <laughs> like Santa Claus. Your own inner Santa Claus is like, I'm going to give that to mom. I'm going to give that to my neighbor. I'm going to give that to the lady I work with or you know, whoever is the object of our hatred, the Holy Spirit can, no, no, give it to me. I, I want this <laughs> present. <laughs> That's how every day is Christmas. <laughs> Jonas? Hello. Hello? Um, yeah. I just have this newfound love for the Course in Miracles. And, and I feel like for, you know, I read it a lot for three years, really a lot. And then I kind of put it away and I thought, okay, now, now it must be inside me. And mm -hmm. then, you know, still studying some other books, but it was like that every time I took the course, it was like, there was always some excuse to really go deep. It's like, if, if I want to go deep to the place where I can feel it, I feel like I need to spend some, some good amount of time with it for it to attract me. Because otherwise, the world has too much pull in me still. And I get angry at God, and then I get sick, and then I, then I use all these things against it. So it's like, for me, it takes, it takes like, it's something that I have to decide, and then I have to stick to it very consistently to keep me in that space. Mm -hmm. And that's also why for me, I believe it's given that I do less function because now I feel this is 
the most beautiful function. And but at the same time, you know, if me and Vanessa, we have a morning meeting every morning, and if we talk about let's spend an hour doing this together, or can you spend an hour doing this, Jonas, or another hour doing that? Um, of course, that's fine. But actually, what I just wanted to ask was more actually of a study question about the course of miracles. And my question is because, you know, having learned how to study in a university uh, institution, I have learned that when I want to study something, I have to repeat, write down, remember, and then um, sum summarize so that everything kind of starts to build the momentum. And that's how I studied it for, th for the three years. But now I'm more like a little more random, still having some chapters I get back to. But what it seems to me is that when I have the you know, if I just have two pages for one day and then I just keep going over it, then it's like these thoughts from the two pages, they will get programmed into my mind. And I like that. At the same time, I'm also afraid that it's a little rigid to kind of, you know, say to myself, okay, only these two pages for today. Or So I just wanted to ask like, is there, some thoughts about how to study. Whatever is inspiring. And it sounds like you feel that it's inspiring and the ego will find something to complain about that is too rigid or something, but it's not rigid if it makes you want to do it. If you, you know, you want to, um, satiate what is saturate or okay. saturate I think the mind in it you know marinate in the ideas <laughs> exactly yeah yeah okay so yeah sounds good <laughs> Mm, in. I'll just uh, leave you now and say I'm so um, grateful for this um, sharing. I'm going on a trip with some mighty companions, Mayana and Ulla, and <laughs> yeah, our Mendes group. And yeah, I really love this morning sharing with you. And the reason why I don't join every day is because I also do it with the Mendes group. So, so uh, I'm a little split sometimes, but... <laughs> It's about the same thing, and I really enjoy this uh, this uh, morning session with you. It's um, and when I I miss it, I listen to it on YouTube. So uh, I'm very grateful for this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very helpful, and it's it reminds me what's going on inside myself. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing you <laughs> in the end of this month and. Being together with you, yeah. Yeah, we look forward to it too. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good trip with the companions. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And it's hot today in Denmark, 23 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Love you. <laughs> Same to you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Karen. Bye. <laughs> okay. Nicole we'll yeah. just keep saying we'll bye, say bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you.